On today's Bite Size, I want to look at why DOS has 8.3 file name constraints and how we transitioned to long file names. We're used to assigning pretty much whatever names we like to files in our current operating systems. If we're feeling crazy, we can even include spaces and special characters in our Word documents, spreadsheets, even executables. But this hasn't always been the case, and indeed even today, I still tend to save my files adhering to the limited conventions of Microsoft DOS. I mean, who uses spaces in file names? I'd rather burn my own feet than follow such an off-the-chain practice. So it's clear we're talking limitations here. Limitations of early hardware and the software which ran on it. As these wares have evolved, our ability to have more has increased. But of course we need to delve into the underlying reasons. So for that we need to begin with FAT. Going back to how DOS carves up a disk, the directory and FAT are a team in locating files. The directory tells you what the names of your files are and the FAT tells you where that file is located. The FAT immediately follows the DOS boot record on a disk. It always begins on DOS sector number one. DOS then stores two copies of the FAT right next to each other, one for backup purposes. And the FAT size will vary according to how large the partition is. The FAT is then immediately followed by the root directory. Following this root, data is then stored on the disk. Subdirectory entries are also stored in this data region, whose paths and locations on disk can all be traced from the root directory, providing the branching effect we're familiar with. Within the root directory and each subsequent directory table, we find directory entries, each of which contain 32 bytes of information about their related file. Versions of Microsoft DOS before 1.4 contained only 16 bytes of data, which supported files no larger than 16 megabytes and lacked a last modification date. So this 32 bytes of data is used to store crucial information about our file. At the end of each entry we have the file size, which consumes 4 bytes. We then have the starting cluster number, which in conjunction with the FAT allows us to determine where the file resides on disk. 2 bytes is then reserved for the last time of modification. Another 2 bytes for the date. 10 then set aside for additional information and future expansion. This includes the creation and access dates in DOS 7 onwards, but was also used for storing a password hash on the systems like DRDOS and Novell DOS. One byte for attributes is next, allowing for 8 attribute bits, such as hidden, read only and archive, and can also be used to specify that the entry points to a directory rather than a file. We are then left with 3 bytes for the file extension and 8 bytes for its name, right at the start of each entry, giving us the 8.3 file name restriction DOS is known and loved for. The absolute directory path was also limited to 66 characters, enforcing a subdirectory depth of 32 folders. There were also restrictions on legal characters for the file name, many of which remain in place today. These include the asterisks and question mark symbols which are used as search operators. And although lowercase characters could be used, they were stored as uppercase in both FAT12 and 16 file systems. In the early days of computing, this 8.3 restriction seemed more than enough. It was a reasonable settlement between disk space and descriptiveness, and seemed more than ample in the days of DOS. After all, who would want to type out lengthy file names to open and manipulate files and directories? Like many characteristics of DOS, its origins are really from the CPM operating system but in a DOS sense began with BASIC 86, an implementation of Microsoft BASIC created for the Seattle Computer Products 8086 Computer Kit in 1979. This implementation provided a standalone disk-based language system and incorporated an 8-bit FAT file system developed by Mark McDonald and Bill Gates. The SCP wanted an operating system more like Digital Research's CPM. Tim Patterson was put on task to evolve BASIC 86 into 86DOS, part of which involved extending the 8-bit FAT to a 12-bit FAT, and also allowed for increasing the 9-character limit on the BASIC 86 to 11 characters, in line with the 8.3 file names supported under CPM. 
Microsoft then bought these rights from SCP and the rest is history. Now, why CPM enforced an 8.3 limit isn't recorded in specific detail, but fitting directory entries into a nice tidy 32 bytes probably played a large part. And just my tuppence, but it allows the word file name to just slot in there very nicely. Also, many operating systems, such as Intel ISIS, yeah, <laughs> I know. Anyway, this was around at the time of its development and used a 6.3 naming convention, mainly because earlier machines like the DEC PDP-10 utilised 36-bit words and 6-bit characters. This allowed the three-character extension to fit neatly into half a word and the file name to reside in a whole word. Given time had moved on and they weren't working with the same hardware limitations, expanding on this by two characters seemed probably a good step in the right direction for digital research, but this was still less than the 14 character limit on Unix. Anyway, this is really speculation, so let's move on. Although we're not limited to it, the three character extension still serves us well today. But in the world of graphical environments where all files can be quickly opened with a double click, users demanded more description. Microsoft implemented long file names in 1993 with Windows NT 3.1, and the NT file system was born, otherwise known as NTFS. Although, don't get these icon titles confused with file names, these are just shortcut descriptions which link to the original file, and were already available in standard versions of Windows. But, to ensure backwards compatibility with existing DOS setups, some clever implementation would be required for Windows 95. This compatibility came with the introduction of Virtual FAT or VFAT. Like many things, IBM's OS 2 was already ahead of this change through the use of extended attributes, which it stored in a separate hidden file. Anyway. VFAT's goal was to allow backwards compatibility with the traditional directory setup of FAT by placing additional entries into the directory before each normal file entry. These additional entries are marked with the volume label, system hidden and read only tags, which is not a combination expected under usual DOS environments, and therefore ignored. Each of these entries can contain up to 13 characters by using various fields of the original 32-bit entry size. 20 of these entries can be chained before each file, allowing a maximum file name length of 255 characters. Under DOS, these files will be visible by the first six characters of their name, followed by a tilde symbol and integer to avoid duplication. If this leaves more than nine files with the same name, the last three characters are used instead. Extended characters allowed in long file names such as the plus, comma, semicolon and equals are converted to underscores and spaces are simply ignored. If you choose to fire up a command prompt in Windows 95 or 98 for example, then you'll be able to see both long and short file names. However, if the file name or directory has a space or special character in, you'll need to reference its shortened 8.3 file name to navigate successfully. Or if you're feeling fancy, you can just use quotation marks. Whereas Windows simply interprets these VFAT hacks, collects the data, and presents the long file name to the user in a completely hidden process. Early versions of Windows 95 actually included a utility called lfnk.exe, which stripped file names from the VFAT volume and stored them in a text file, in case you ever wanted to revert back to the good old days. And you can actually get drivers such as DOS LFN, which implement long file name support in any version of DOS. There were also programs such as 4DOS, which replaced the default command.com interpreter and allowed for additional file descriptions of up to 511 characters in length. Of course, nowadays you can use long file names via a DOS command prompt, even spaces. But of course, NTFS is now pretty standard, although FAT does remain with us in the guise of XFAT, but it's quite a different beast to the FAT we know and love, and sadly lacks support for the traditional 8.3 format file names. Thanks for watching! Click a video, subscribe, support me, or do other things of your choosing. In any case, have a great evening.